In at number 10, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell is a comedian and known for crossing the line a few times even as she worked as a host for The View. Unfortunately for Rosie, she never learned how to turn off the rude behavior when it came to her personal life. According to reports, the reason why she was fired from The View was due to multiple people on the set saying that she was far too mean to finish the season with. That was in 2007 and meant that she wouldn't even complete the first season of the show. Rosie did eventually return back to the program later on, but promised that she would be a much calmer version. However, that comeback only lasted five months after she released her her contract to focus on her family following a divorce with her husband. Entertainment Tonight had interviewed some of the staff that worked with O'Donnell and here's what they found. O'Donnell, who has a reputation as a demanding and sometimes abrasive boss, didn't feel like her strengths were being properly used by ABC, according to those close to the 52-year-old comedian. Compounding the problem were tensions with the co-host Whoopi Goldberg and behind-the-scenes executive turmoil at The View, which recently shifted to management under ABC News. Rosie confirmed to be rude. If Whoopi Goldberg doesn't like you, we, we got a problem. In at number 9, Tommy Lee Jones. Hey, remember when I said that some of these may not be confirmed? This one is most definitely confirmed. Tommy Lee Jones already gives off those vibes that he may be a grumpy dude in real life, but don't take my word for it, listen to Joan and Melissa Rivers. They had direct interactions with this celebrity and every time list him as the worst to deal with. Who's given you the worst red carpet interview? Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, no question. He's at the top of everybody's lists. Joan has stated before that he acts like a snob and because he went to Yale, he therefore believes that he's better Better than everyone. In at number eight, Jared Leto. No, no, that's not his name. It's Jared Leto. Jared, Jared, oh, sick. Uh, big ups, man. What's your name? Grinder. Jared Leto certainly has had his awkward moments in the press and on stage as you saw there. Upon looking into interactions with this celebrity, I found multiple articles about how he terrorized the cast and crew of Suicide Squad. He fully committed to the role of the Joker and it was nasty. He treated Margot Robbie as if she was Harley Quinn, so imagine that dialogue on a daily basis. Plus he sent her a rat as a gift. And before they even started filming, Leto decided to give everyone on set a gift. Viola Davis witnessed the incident and said he did some bad things Jared Leto did. He gave some really horrific gifts. He had a henchman who would come into the rehearsal room and then the henchman came in with a dead pig and plopped it on the table and then just walked out. And that was our introduction into Jared Leto. In at number seven, Carrie Underwood. Carrie is a notoriously private person that doesn't resort to acting rude to keep things private. However, the worst of the worst interactions have been from the people that had to work with Underwood. In Toronto, Carrie was the headlining act at a major charity event, but when walking down the red carpet, she repeatedly snubbed the event staff. The PR staff is in charge of directing the celebrities down the carpet so that they don't get caught up with, you know, interviews or too long of a photo shoot. While one of them was trying to do their job and direct Carrie, she said that Underwood looked at her with disgust as she sized her up and down before walking away. Besides that, there's also her strange attention grabbing posts. A while back, she had reported that after a bad fall, she needed 40 to 50 stitches in her face and that she would look completely different. Then she posted a photo and everyone said, uh, nothing has change. You look exactly the same. Quit being so rude to people who have actually had terrible things done to their face. In at number six, John Hamm. I have what, the nerve what? to not be in love with John Hamm. What happened? I just think he's like douchey. Say what you will about Kathy Griffin, but I actually feel bad for her in this scenario. Here she is getting invited to an exclusive Hollywood dinner, getting to meet Jack Nicholson for the first time, only to have John Hamm yapping in her ear. No matter who you ask in Hollywood, most people will fawn over how much they adore and love John Hamm. Yet Kathy has consistently upheld that he is one of the rudest celebrities that she's ever met. Even in her memoir, she wrote about how Hamm had repeatedly harassed her at a party for no reason. While intoxicated, he called her old and topped it off by saying, that her career was a failure. It's no wonder he worked so well as Don Draper and Mad Men because that's actually who this celebrity embodies most. In at number five, Christian Bale. What is he doing there? Do you understand my mind is not in the scene if you're doing that? I, I absolutely apologize. Sorry, I did not mean anything bad. Stay off the set, man. When this tape leaked, Christian Bale not only had to go on a press tour for his new movie, but an apology tour as well. That Christian Bale rant had so many expletives in it that I was almost certain that I couldn't even find a clip for this video. While filming The Terminator Salvation, a crew member had accidentally walked onto the set interrupting Bale while he was, I don't know, acting super seriously. This sent the celebrity into a downward spiral of anger where the F word suddenly became punctuation for his sentences. He nearly stopped all production on the movie just so that he could release his frustrations on the hardworking film crew. We get that some acting requires intense focus, but regardless, if someone breaks that focus, that doesn't give the actor license to scream at them. In at number four, Kanye West. The young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he doing? Why would he there? do that? He's a 
Now, I'm sure that the editors had to bleep that, but even President Obama has confirmed how rude Kanye is. During a 2009 press interview at the White House, Obama didn't realize that his mic was still on. The interviewer was asking the president how he felt about what Kanye did to Taylor Swift, although he didn't seem shocked that Wes could be so rude. Not only did Kanye's famous VMA interruption get him more negative press than when he said that George Bush hated black people, but he doubled down on his rude behavior. When Trump became president, Kanye continued to treat others horribly. He toted a mega had while also saying that slavery was a choice. On top of his political controversies, the rapper from Chicago has also repeatedly dragged Taylor Swift's name through the mud, even having his wife just join in on their gross behavior. In at number three, Ariana Grande. <laughs> Ariana Grande is a confusing one because at times you feel bad for her, but then she'll turn around and have a diva moment like that and you just go, damn, that was really rude. She turned to her red carpet assistant and told her to get out of the way because she was ruining the photos. She also had a run-in with Juliana Rancic and according to Juliana, while interviewing her, Ariana poked her in the side and gestured for her to switch positions in front of the camera like while the interview was going. When the interviewer didn't know what she meant, Ariana leaned in and made it very clear. She said, I only allow photos to be taken from my left side, my good side. Oh, and let's not forget her infamous donut licking scandal. That is, that was nasty. While at a bakery with some friends, Ariana just licked two of the donuts on display, didn't pay for them, didn't even eat them. Just laughed and then walked away. In at number two, Mel Gibson. Where do we even start? Oh yeah, now I remember. Oh, great editor God, can you please roll the clip? What's even more disturbing is that what you just heard was the fourth phone call and surprisingly enough that was one of the least aggressive ones that I could find. The odd thing about Mel Gibson is that throughout the 80s and 90s he was a nice and well respected lead actor. He was becoming well known for the Lethal Weapon movies and some believe that his ego just started getting a little too big. These vicious voicemails are the result of a drinking problem combined with coping that he was no longer Hollywood's go-to guy. With that much pent up anger and untreated mental illness he was destined to be a rude dude. Last but not least our number one spot, Rihanna. Rihanna takes the cake for the rudest celebrity in Hollywood after this online bullying scandal. In 2010, Rihanna attended the Echo Awards in this green catsuit dress with like bat wings. It was strange. That's really the only way I could describe it. Oddly enough, this look was a huge hit with her fans, so people everywhere were making their own versions. Unfortunately for 16 year old fan Alexis Carter, she got to see her idol in a whole new light. When she posted her photo trying to pay homage to her favorite artist, she was bullied by a lot of people, including Rihanna, who posted this meme. Then just a few minutes later, she posted this meme. Can you imagine working so hard on making your prom dress to look like Rihanna's and then she says it sucks via Twitter? What a time to be alive. At least celebrities are exposing themselves for us. So for that, we thank you. In at number 10, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer has legendary status for being one of the rudest and most difficult people to work with in Hollywood. Since the early 1980s, Kilmer was booking gigs left and right. Plus, he proved to be commercially viable with the major success of the film Batman Forever, which ended up booking him several more roles and perhaps adding to his bad reputation. While working on the movie The Island of Dr. Moreau, the director said Val would show up and an argument would happen almost immediately. John Frankenheimer ended up replacing that director after he only worked three days with the actor before being fired. Still, even John said, I don't like Val Kilmer, I don't like his work ethic, and I don't want to be associated with him ever again. In at number nine, Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl seems to be the type of celebrity that says yes to every opportunity, and then when she regrets it later, she just openly bashes her decisions in the public eye. The first case of this happening was when she co-starred opposite Seth Rogen for the Judd Apatow film Knocked Up. Seth Rogen said at the time that he was having a great time while working with Heigl and mainly because she was improvising a lot of her own stuff, which was great for the film. However, not too long after that, she did an interview with Vanity Fair and expressed just how much she hated the movie. Heigl said, It was a little sexist. It paints the women as shrews, as humorless and uptight, and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. It exaggerated the characters, and I had a hard time with it on some days. I'm playing such a bitch. Why is she being such a killjoy? Why is this how you're portraying women? 98% of the time, it was an amazing experience, but it was hard for me to love the movie. Well, now it's hard for anyone to trust you, Catherine. She had some commentary about Knocked Up after it came out. What'd she say? She, she 
didn't like it. She didn't like it? But she was so awesome in it, so it, it, we, it was right. confusing. Yeah. In at number eight, Bruce Willis. During a press run for his film Red 2, along with co-star Mary Louise Parker, Bruce was noticeably annoyed that he had to even answer the interviewer's questions. Jamie Edwards from Britain's Magic 105.4 actually called it the most awkward interview he's ever had. Apparently, Bruce was barely present while being interviewed, which led to this super cringe I moment. I told you this, Jamie. This part is not acting, what we're doing right now. You might be, but we're just selling the film now. When asked which location he preferred while they were filming the movie, Bruce answered with Istanbul. The problem with that answer wasn't his dismissive tone, the problem was that the film never even filmed there. He just said a place he liked, making that poor reporter's job even more difficult as he tried to maintain his composure. In at number 7, Mike Myers. Mike Myers had built himself quite the career with a successful run on Saturday Night Live that led to his character creations being adapted into movies like Wayne's World. Although when the actor starred as the cat in the film The Cat in the Hat, he was allegedly a nightmare to work with. His co-star Amy Hill spoke publicly about Mike's behavior and she said he had his handlers dress his trailer and his area was all covered with tenting because he didn't want anyone seeing him. It was so weird. It was just the worst. I was miserable. I just thought it was really rude of him to not take us all into consideration. A monster? Where? <laughs> that could have gone better. <laughs> In at number six, Beyonce. If, um, being a group as in Destiny's Child. Um, I'm sorry, but I answered this question already. Oh, okay. did? Okay. All right. Beyond the shady looks that she used to give her background singers in Destiny's Child whenever they were off key, Beyonce has also been known to invoke her diva status on more than one occasion. She's avoided eye contact with red carpet assistants and yelled at photographers for not getting her good side and more recently sparked controversy at the Golden Globes. When it was announced that Joaquin Phoenix had won for Best Actor, everyone stood up. Everyone from Leonardo DiCaprio to the ever so rude Ellen DeGeneres. Although Beyonce was noticeably unamused by the announcement and just remained seated even though she was literally right beside him. However, Twitter was quick to call her out for this. One person tweeted, Sorry, but I don't think this is the type of energy anyone should be praised for. I don't know if there was another reason for her sitting, but the fact that she didn't stand with everyone else, especially during a standing ovation, is rude point blank. In at number five, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is the exact polar opposite of what you should do when pursuing a career in Hollywood. He carries with him a terrible offset and onset reputation, and the debacle he went through in 2011 even led to his contract termination from the show Two and a Half Men. For a while, he was all over the news for everything. I mean, substance abuse, domestic violence, and even when he revealed that he was HIV positive. With his history of flying off the drop of a hat and trying to get people fired who speak ill of him, Sheen has had a very difficult time trying to rebuild his career. Also, there was the major shade thrown when Ashton Kutcher took his place on the show Two and a Half Men. In and number four, Madonna. So someone who knows about sound better come up here and explain something to me. <clears throat> I'm waiting. If you thought Beyonce was being a diva, well, who do you think she learned it from? Madonna is the queen of snide and crass remarks, some subtle and some just thrown right at you. When the star appeared on the Graham Norton show, she was blasted by viewers for the way that she interacted with Sir Ian McKellen. Graham Norton had asked if they had already met, and while Madonna couldn't remember, Ian described a very detailed encounter, to which Madonna barely even acknowledged. In fact, she looked very annoyed to even be on the show in the first place. There was also another very awkward moment when Madonna asked Ian what he does, even though he literally just told her that they were on the same show together once for a charity event in Los Angeles. How dare you disrespect Sir Ian McKellen. In number three, Michael Bay. Crazy ability to put up with Michael Bay. This has to be all grips on hand with this thing. Yes, it is not to move under the tail. You understand me? Yes, sir. All right, am I very oh. clear? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Not only has director Michael Bay been referred to as a major sexist, but he's also worse than the most feared army general in the world. He treats his sets like a war zone and directs his staff like they are his subordinates that need to be put in their place. Not only that, but when you're filming with Michael Bay, you film on his time. He's been known to show up hours late for shoots, and then the moment that his feet touch the ground, it's just go, go, go from there. He wants everything done fast and leaves no room for joking around or contemplating anything, including how his staff may feel after he berated them for hours upon hours with harassing comments. In at number two, Justin Bieber. I got the goddamn way, man. Damn. <laughs> oh, 
on the left. Yes, that was Justin Bieber hitting a photographer in his exotic car showing zero regard for human life. On top of that heinous video, the star has also been known to spit on people he doesn't like, which sometimes actually include his own fans. While staying at a hotel in Toronto with some friends, Justin took to his balcony where hundreds of people were desperately waiting outside to see a glimpse of the star, although he only emerged to hawk a loogie down towards them. After this disgusting act, the star seemed to be pleased with himself, turning to his group of admiring friends to laugh. His impressed friends then joined in as they all crowded around and took a selfie on his phone, clearly showing all of the people behind them that they just spit on. Gross. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Shia LaBeouf. They got cameras everywhere, you dummy. I got more millionaire lawyers than you know what to do with, you stupid I'm from it, you dummy. Okay. Aside from the way that he treats police officers when he's drunk, Shy has slowly established himself as the rudest man in Hollywood, especially after that debacle at the Academy Awards with his co-star Zach Gottensagen. While Zach was busy making history as the first person with Down Syndrome to present an Academy Award, Shy was busy rushing the poor guy through his moment in the sun. Zach understandably had a difficult time doing the kind of back and forth dialogue with Shia LaBeouf, and fans noticed just how impatient the stars seemed to be getting with him. One person took to Twitter to express her complaint saying, You're on a national stage and you look annoyed at your co-presenter? You're an actor, Shia LaBeouf. At least act like a decent human being. Will Smith has been making us laugh for many years, but people have warned us that he is not the same person that we see on our screens. Is Will Smith the rudest celebrity in Hollywood? I have to start off by saying, personally, I am a huge fan of Will Smith and I always have been. I can't speak on this because I've never met him, but there have been examples shared online of not so pleasant experiences with the actor. One of them is when a fellow actor and comedian, Paul Rodriguez came forward saying Will wasn't nice when they worked together on the movie Ali. Actually, he called him an if I'm being real and transparent. Paul went on the radio and said that Will was an and did steroids to bulk up for his role as the legendary boxer. He didn't elaborate on details, but claimed he also said really offensive and racist things. Will denied these allegations and even addressed the steroid claim, saying that he did not use steroids and said that he prepared his body for that role for over a year by boxing every day for hours, studying Islam, and working with dialect coaches. If he was doing steroids, it might explain why he was acting like an a-hole, but this is all just she said, he said, so we really won't know. It's just kind of whose side of the story you believe on that one. Actress Janet Hubert, who played Aunt Viv on his iconic TV series, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, has also had very negative things to say about him. She called him an egomaniac and told TMZ, I will never do anything with a like Will Smith. Fans actually turned against Will during this time because her character was replaced on the show and everyone pointed the finger at him. Aunt Viv was a huge fan favorite of the show, but Will said he had nothing to do with it. He responded to some of her remarks and said, she's mad now, but she's been mad all along. She once said, I've been in the business for 10 years and this snotty nosed punk comes along and gets a show. No matter what, to her, I'm just the antichrist. That does sound a little personal between those two. So, I mean, I'm sure people have called me an a-hole. Doesn't mean you gotta believe them. Like, I'm actually a really nice person. Another thing that people often criticize him for is his parenting. His son, Jaden Smith, has landed in controversy on a number of occasions, and people have pointed the finger at the parents. During an interview with Vanity Fair, people claim that he actually threw his kids under the bus. Both of his kids, Willow and Jaden, show their freedom of expression through their unique style, which they often get criticized for. When asked about it, Will said, I praise their freedom of expression and consciously encourage them to have. I think it may have been a mistake. I think we might have gone too far. He did say it with a chuckle and like a light tone, but some people interpret it as being disrespectful towards his kids and kind of just toss them under the bus. Like, shouldn't you defend your kids at all times? That's where people were going with that. It also doesn't help that his wife, Jada Smith, admitted during an interview that Will makes insensitive comments to their kids, even in their personal life. During an interview, she said that Will occasionally makes insensitive remarks to their daughter, Willow, regarding her period. She said, Willow has gone at her dad several times for very insensitive comments, whether it's around menstruation or, you know, you must be PMSing. 
Jada admitted that she talked to Will about it and said that it is a work in progress. She explained that her husband is often a jokester who needs to be corrected and called out for hurtful comments sometimes. I think it really comes down to where his intentions are. Sometimes jokes can go too far, even if you weren't intending them to be hurtful, right? But is that a valid excuse? What do you guys think? Let me know what your thoughts are on Will Smith. However, when it comes to fans and people meeting him in person, he does have a lot of positive experiences. On Mean Stars, he was rated 80% for being nice, and overall, Hollywood has been in love with him for years. He was chosen to play the genie in the new Aladdin live action remake, and there's no doubt that it's a family friendly, lovable character. Many people said that he was the perfect fit for it, which I agree. I did a little test though, just out of curiosity, and if you go to Google and type in, I love Will Smith, there are over 1 billion results. If you go in and type, I hate Will Smith, there are 171 million, so there is a huge gap between the two. However, that is a lot of hate. At number 10, Jake Paul. Once upon a time, Jake Paul was a Disney star. It's easy to forget he was once on the Disney Channel because he's now focused on harassing boxers, but yeah, he did have a brief career on the network. Back in 2017, he was one of the stars of the Disney Channel show Bizarre Mark, and though he and Disney got a lot of success out of the show, things ended on a sour note as too much bad press ended up with Jake losing his job. Around this time, Jake was often in the news being slammed and criticized for his stunts and constant filming because of his team 10 mates, and he had been causing quite a number of disturbances in his residential area. Jake and the Team 10 crew were lighting backyards on fire and causing a lot of ruckus to the point where Jake's neighbors started issuing complaints about the noise and destruction going on in the area. Jake's neighbors had police issuing warnings and fines for all sorts of things, and whenever Jake would get in trouble, the media reported on it, and it all got back to Disney. Jake ended up losing his job all because of the trouble he was causing, and honestly, the neighbors couldn't care less. To them, he got what he deserved and when he finally moved out of the area, they were thrilled. I couldn't imagine living next to the Team 10 house with all the fans coming around and the constant noise. Jake surely was not very hospitable then. At number 9, Catherine Zeta-Jones. I did a series of videos exposing mean celebrities and one of the people I exposed was Catherine Zeta-Jones. I've talked about how she's known to be mean and dismissive towards fans, but those aren't the only people to be rubbed the wrong way by the actress. Some neighbors have exposed the actress for being pretty rude. One person even shared a story about how Catherine went on a vacation and was renting a condo for a short time while visiting a different city, and she specifically demanded that the other tenants in the building be banned from using the building's gym while she was staying there. As one would expect, this did not go over well with other tenants. No one wants to be told that they can't use the facilities that they pay to enjoy. Those tenants said that she acted very entitled and none of them were fans of hers from that moment on. If you find out that you'll be living near Catherine Zeta-Jones, I would advise that you find another place to stay. Now before I carry on with the list, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far and also head on over to my gaming channel Viper Girl if you're looking for some new fun gaming content to enjoy and subscribe while you're there. At number 8, Justin Bieber. I think we are all aware of Justin Bieber's destructive phase, right? Around 2014, Justin was constantly in the news for getting into fights, getting into trouble, and just really going a bit off the rails. A lot of people were complaining about Justin's behavior, including his neighbors. One of the biggest scandals that Justin was involved in during that time came about after he reportedly caused over $20,000 worth of damage to his neighbor's house. Neighbors accused the singer and his friends of egging their multi-million dollar mansion, and they were furious as anyone would be. This was all taken to court where Justin pleaded no contest to the misdemeanor charge, and he got away with not facing a criminal charge in the case. Justin also paid $80,000 to his neighbor in restitution. Things died down a bit between him and his neighbor until 2016, when the neighbor reclassified his lawsuit against the singer, claiming that, quote, things got nasty between them. He said that Justin was a bully, and according to the neighbor, he had been, quote, spitting at, punching, and bullying other members of the public with impunity for years. I'm sure that nowadays Justin is a little nicer to his neighbors, but back then he was really rude. At number seven, Chris Brown. Chris Brown has certainly had his fair share of conflicts, from fighting workers at a gym to having outbursts on various sets and even his 2009 Rihanna incident, but there's another category of people that the singer has also offended, and those 
close are his neighbors. In 2016, the singer had a day-long standoff with SWAT. This all came about after a woman alleged that Chris had threatened her with a firearm. The woman was able to get away, but eventually the police were called about the incident, but Chris refused to let the police in his home without a warrant, so they set up camp, and that's when SWAT moved in. There were helicopters flying overhead, and the singer even allegedly threw a duffel bag full of firearms and illicit substances out the window. The standoff lasted for hours and had neighbors in the area upset with Chris for causing such a scene. He was eventually arrested, but if you think his problems with his neighbors were over, think again. Chris also faced complaints from neighbors after reportedly driving his ATV around the neighborhood recklessly and doing donuts in the street. If you're thinking about becoming the singer's neighbor, just don't. At number six, Drake. Drake may be Canadian, but he surely doesn't have that polite Canadian energy. Drake once made enemies with his neighbors in Hidden Hills, California, when they started making noise complaints in response to the rapper's loud and extravagant parties. According to those in the neighborhood, Drake's parties would often go until very early in the morning, causing many of them to lose sleep. After receiving one too many noise complaints, Drake took action, but not in a way that anyone was expecting. Instead of dialing back the parties and being more respectful of the noise level in the neighborhood, Drake decided that flexing was the best solution, so he bought the house next door. He spent $2.8 million to simply expand his land so that those in the immediate vicinity wouldn't have to deal with his mess. He didn't want to be accountable to anyone, so he just bought his way out of the problem. I mean, that is one easy way of handling things, but I'm sure it would have been cheaper to just turn the music down. At number five, Charlie Sheen. After Charlie Sheen had such a dramatic run-in with his neighbor that a lawsuit was filed over it. Charlie's show Two and a Half Men was still pretty big at the time of his neighbor drama. Having had 12 seasons from 2003 to 2015, it was one of the biggest and most successful sitcoms on TV, and sometimes success brings drama. Back in 2006, three years into the show's run, Charlie Sheen was sued by his neighbor, a woman by the name of Ursula Auburn. She claimed that one of the characters in the show was based on her, and she was really offended by it. In her lawsuit against Charlie, she had claimed that, quote, the wacky neighbor and female stalker Rose was based on her because the character shares similarities to the way Ursula spoke, looked, and dressed in real life. Imagine being exposed like that on TV, seeing what your neighbor thinks of you while watching a dramatic version of yourself on a sitcom. As a result of all this, Ursula tried suing Charlie for, quote, no less than $1 million. The suit eventually settled out of court, and no one really knows if Charlie really did base the character off his neighbor, but it certainly made her upset. At number four, Taylor Swift. Even though she's known for being pretty nice to people, apparently she still managed to anger her neighbors. Really, you can't please everyone, but in this case, Taylor's actions caused a major inconvenience to the people around her. In 2013, Taylor made her neighbors pretty upset when she made some additions to her Rhode Island home. Taylor was looking to build a huge wall around her property, but to do that, she needed to have some coastline rocks moved out of the way. This disturbed the surrounding area and neighbors weren't happy. Taylor's representative said that the movement of the rocks wasn't her choice, but that it was the government who asked her to move the rocks that had drifted into the ocean back to her property line. This was a lot of land disturbance just to build a big wall. Neighbors were not happy about the wall itself because they said that it had taken away the public access that they had enjoyed for years. I think it's safe to say that Taylor had an unpleasant welcome to the neighborhood. At number three, Machine Gun Kelly. It seems like Machine Gun Kelly isn't just loud on stage, but also at home. You would think that he would put that loud rocker persona to rest while at home in his free time, but according to his neighbors, that couldn't be further from the truth. His neighbors have said that he's been known to host loud and crazy parties, disturbing much of his community, and he's also known to have joy rides with his friends on the block. Neighbors have also complained about loud motorcycles revving their engines at inappropriate times of the night, and he and his guests have spilled over into neighboring properties from time to time. It's also been reported that during parties, Kelly's guests have parked in neighbors' driveways, and and have blocked in many of the neighbor's cars as well. It seems as though he doesn't really have a sense of respect for other people's properties or quiet hours. At number two, Natasha Lyonne. Orange is the new black star, Natasha Lyonne is certainly a nasty neighbor. She once had a serious altercation with one of her neighbors that she actually faced criminal charges for. In 2005, there was a warrant out for Natasha's arrest 
after she confronted her neighbor in a fit of rage. According to sources, Natasha banged on her neighbor's door, stormed into the apartment, and even ripped a mirror off the wall. The actress also allegedly told her neighbor that she was going to hurt her dog. Because of her actions, Natasha was hunted down by authorities and charged with criminal mischief, harassment, and trespassing. Luckily for her, those charges were eventually dropped, but she was ordered to pay her neighbor $2,000 in restitution. Reading about what that neighbor went through, I would have hated to have lived in that area too. Now, I'm not sure what brought on Natasha's fit of rage, but it had to have been something really intense to result in her causing so much damage to her neighbor's property. And finally, number one, Ivanka Trump. Even the president's daughter can cause some terror in her community. Being high profile people, you're bound to cause a scene wherever you go, and Ivanka Trump's neighbors had to learn this the hard way. Shortly after Ivanka and her husband moved to their new home after her father was elected into office, Ivanka's neighbors were already starting to complain. Because of her relationship to the then president of the United States, she and her family always had security in close proximity, and this caused a disturbance in the neighborhood because of how many people were following the family at every waking moment. According to neighbors, even having a walk in the park was a grand affair because there were cars constantly following Ivanka's every move. But it's not just the disturbance caused by security that rubbed people the wrong way. Neighbors also complained about Ivanka's trash, saying that she always missed the neighborhood garbage day and that her trash was constantly stinking up the street. She wasn't very considerate to her neighbors and they surely hated her for it. In at number 10, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato got tons of backlash after she tried to cancel a small business because she didn't like the products that they were selling. Demi decided to grab some frozen yogurt from a popular foyo place in LA called The Big Chill. But she wasn't happy with what she saw while in the shop and shared her disdain with her over 100 million Instagram followers, writing on her story, quote, finding it extremely hard to order froyo from The Big Chill when you have to walk past tons of sugar-free cookies slash other diet foods before you get to the counter. Do better, please. Adding the hashtag diet culture vultures. This caused an online feud between Demi and the shop where Demi called them diet vultures. Well, they said they were just selling products for their broad customer base, which includes diabetics, celiac, and vegans. The general consensus around this whole event is that Demi is an entitled Karen, and she needs to realize that the world does not revolve around her. Of course, her anger was spurred from her long struggle with food issues. However, she should not have publicly tried to ruin a small business, especially during a pandemic. In at number nine, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan gained a reputation for being rude during a scandal with Meghan Markle, and there's actually a dating story behind it makes the whole thing even more juicy. So apparently Piers asked Morgan out on a date before she was with Harry, of course. And rumor has it that they went out on the date, but Megan ghosted Piers after, so this could be the reason that he is constantly critical of her. More recently, after Megan's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, Piers did not hold back trashing her on Good Morning Britain. Before him and the other hosts could even discuss the topic, he went on raging about how the interview is tarnishing the reputation of Britain around the world and hurting everything the Queen has worked so hard for. He also said that he doesn't believe a word that she says. He later left the show after outrage against his comments. In at number eight, James Corden. James Corden seems really nice on camera, but is well known for being awful off set. His rep is so bad that he did a Reddit AMA in 2019, and it practically turned into a roasting session, with tons of people bringing up terrible encounters they had with Corden. Apparently, he goes out of his way to be mean, like advocating for lower pay for TV writers. Literally, why would a rich celebrity ever do that? I have no idea. Apparently, Corden is also known to be rude when fans ask for photos or an autograph with him, especially if he's on set filming. Members of his crew have also claimed that he throws tantrums over minor things and is terrible to work for. He's basically the male version of Ellen. In at number seven, David Letterman. Several old interview clips of David Letterman's have resurfaced recently, and many are saying that he crossed major lines. One example was with Lindsay Lohan from 2013. She did the interview recently at a rehab, and Letterman persistently asked her questions about it. Even though she said many times during the interview that she didn't want to talk about it, he still kept pressing, leading her to cry. Next up was Janet Jackson. Letterman was pressing her about her infamous Super Bowl incident, asking her questions about how the wardrobe malfunction came to be. Right after she was asked about it, she replied, quote, I don't want to relive any of that. But Letterman kept asking while Jackson looked very sad. And in both of these cases and more, Letterman was definitely rude to his guests and crossed major lines with them when they couldn't stand up for themselves. In at number six, John May. John Mayer is known for his sensual songs about love, but the image that you have of him in your head is probably not true, and he's actually pretty rude in real life. Mayer has spoken poorly about a lot of women that he's dated, including Jessica Simpson and Jennifer Aniston, both of whom still hold grudges to this day. And he said some pretty nasty
nasty things about women in general as well. Making very inappropriate comments about women and even going so far as to say that he only finds white women attractive and literally no one else. And speaking of all that, John has also used a lot of racial slurs in the past, saying the n-word with the hard R on a few occasions, and he actually never even apologized. So yeah, remember that next time you hear him on the radio. Halfway at number five, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams basically trashes most celebrities on her show and has a reputation for taking low blows when talking about celebrities. She's made enemies out of practically everyone in the business for her mean-spirited rants. One person she has savagely gone after is Meghan Markle. When Harry and Meghan first got together, she said, quote, there's way too much drama with her and this will not work out. When the two later got married and Meghan became a royal, Wendy said on her show that Meghan, quote, weaseled her way into the kingdom. Then when Wendy was talking about the documentary, Harry and Meghan in African Journey, Meghan spoke about how she was warned that she should stay away from Harry, as the tabloids would ruin her life. But Wendy didn't buy that and said, quote, yes, you did. You knew exactly what you were doing. Please don't try to garner sympathy from us. In at number four, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson has just made enemies out of the Paul brothers after he publicly trashed Jake Paul during his boxing stream. Before the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight, Davidson, who was the host, went viral several times for mocking Paul during backstage segments. At one point, Davidson even asked a question that ended up getting believed in the broadcast. Many believe it was related to the recent claims by a woman that Jake forced himself on her. Later, Davidson also said that he should be in jail. After the fight, Jake and the entire Paul family trashed Davidson, with Jake saying that Pete will not be invited back to host. Jake's dad even said at one point, quote, can I fight that piece of sh**? And at number three, Michael Bay. Not only has director Michael Bay been referred to as a major sexist by celebrities like Megan Fox, he probably doesn't mind, as celebrities speculate that he wants a dictator-like reputation on set. Apparently, he treats his set like a war zone and directs his staff like they're his subordinates that need to be put in place. But he doesn't keep those strict rules for himself, and he's been known to show up hours late for shoots, and in the moment his feet touch the ground, it's go, go, go from there. He basically wants everything done very fast and leaves no room for joking around or even contemplating anything. His staff has also claimed that he berates them for hours and hours on set with harassing comments. In at number two, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber has done some insane stuff over the years, like almost running over a photographer in one of his cars. He's done other controversial stuff, like spit over a crowd of adoring fans. This happened in Toronto. Justin took to his balcony where hundreds of people were desperately waiting outside to see a glimpse of the star. But when Justin came out, he actually spat on them. Him and his wife also don't seem to have thick skin and have been known to sue people on TikTok who expose things about them that they don't like, like one plastic surgeon who exposed what procedures that he thought Haley had done. And finally at number one, Michael Jordan. I actually didn't know this before, but apparently Michael Jordan is one of the rudest and meanest celebrities out there. Rapper Chamillionaire exposed a story of when Jordan was incredibly rude to him. The rapper met Jordan at a party and wanted a picture and autograph with him, which Jordan refused. Chamillionaire said that Jordan told him, quote, I'm not taking pictures with anybody. Then when the rapper tried to explain that he was a huge fan and had just purchased a $7,000 commemorative Michael Jordan jersey, Jordan replied saying, quote, you know what? I'll tell you what, I'll pay you $15,000 right now for a jersey from me and I'll take a picture with you. Jordan is known to be a businessman, but that is just ridiculous, especially after he had already bought New Jersey, like that's crazy. Jordan was also apparently banned from a Miami country club because he was rude to an official when he was confronted about what he was wearing. Jordan's team later released a statement saying, quote, I guess it's their loss, as MJ is a great golfer and a great guest. At number 10, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is sort of known around Hollywood for his attitude. He's had quite a few outbursts in his day, but I'm going to tell you about one restaurant freakout that was just so uncalled for and really disrespectful. Back in 2017, Shia had a bit of a meltdown at a bowling alley restaurant, and I'm guessing it was all chalked up to him being hangry or something because Shia flipped out at staff members over some french fries. Well, at the restaurant in the bowling alley, he went up to order some french fries, and when he was refused, probably because of how rude and aggressive he was being, things got out of hand pretty quickly. In a video captured of the incident, you see Shia behind the bar yelling at one of the staff members about his french fries. The bartender was feeling so threatened by Shia's behavior that he was holding holding a large bottle of Grey Goose vodka as a sort of defensive tactic. It looked like he was ready to smack the actor with the bottle if he got too close, you know? And it even took him to the point of angrily yelling that the bartender was, quote, an effing racist. After being escorted from the premises, Shai kept saying that they effed up and demanded that someone called the police, even though it was definitely unnecessary. There are those who were there that night who said that the actor was drinking a lot that night and that his outburst was probably fueled by his alcoholism, something that the 
the actor has been dealing with. He was very rude and aggressive towards the people in the establishment and it probably left people with a very different view of the actor. At number 9, Stuart Rahr. Billionaire and philanthropist Stuart Rahr is no longer welcome at a popular restaurant thanks to his poor behavior. After throwing a tantrum at Midtown's Nobu 57 back in 2012, Stuart Rahr is no longer welcome at that location nor any other Nobu restaurants because of how rude and disruptive he was towards staff and other guests. It was reported that Rara made quite a scene after not being seated at his favorite table. I mean, there were plenty of other tables to sit at, but this was his table, and those other tables just wouldn't do. According to sources, the billionaire was even caught trying to bribe guests by paying for their meal, which could have cost upwards of a thousand dollars in order to secure his favorite spot, and when he got caught, he fired back at a manager using some pretty colorful language. According to restaurant staff, he arrived late at the restaurant, and upon his arrival, he marched up to the table and demanded that the people sitting there leave because it was his spot. But the drama just doesn't end there though. He then sent an all caps email which included some pretty harsh language to the restaurant executives and added several A-list celebrities to the threat. And then he went back to the restaurant to harass the staff even more. In the end, he ended up getting banned for life and no one was quick to forget how rude he was that day. Now before I go any further, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video and also subscribe to Lindsay Ivan's brand new reaction channel, Peach. It launches at the end of May, so go subscribe and tell her that we sent you. At number eight, Ruby Rose. Now one person that you don't normally think of as rude is model and actress Ruby Rose, but apparently she can be quite rude and disruptive at dining establishments. Back in 2016, Ruby Rose apparently caused such a ruckus at a restaurant that the restaurant's owner had to kick her out. While dining at the Rebellion Bar and Urban Kitchen, Ruby was really rude to one of the restaurant servers and threw a bit of a tantrum. She even threw french fries at the staff member. Ruby had a bit of a Karen moment that day because she was upset about how long she had been waiting for her meal. According to Ruby, she had been waiting in the restaurant for over 90 minutes for her food, which would already anger someone, but to make matters worse, she was also allegedly being egged on by the bartender. The bartender was allegedly mocking and making fun of Ruby for refusing drinks, and they even made fun of her sobriety. So between the rude bartender and the long wait, Ruby just lost her patience and got really mad. She lost her cool and threw some food around, so maybe her anger was a little warranted because of how she was treated by the bartender, but throwing things at staff was a little extreme and very rude. What do you guys think? Was her outburst uncalled for, or would you react in a similar way? At number seven, Usher. I didn't really think singer Usher was one of those stuck up Hollywood types, but apparently he is. According to a service worker who's waited on Usher on many occasions, he's known to walk into restaurants and other establishments with the intention of being waited on hand and foot. And not just even for himself, but for his entourage as well. I mean, there's nothing wrong with expecting quality service, but sometimes that mindset can go a little too far. Even though he expects the best service money can buy, it turns out that he has no intention of buying as he's known to skip out on paying the bill by either leaving before the bill is given or making someone else pay for it. He's also one of those celebrities who's pulled the do you know who I am card as he's used that as an excuse to get out of being carded when ordering an alcoholic beverage. On top of that, he's known to be a pretty lousy tipper, either tipping nothing or tipping with a signed CD or photo. He might make good music, but he makes for a horrible dining room guest. At number six, Tommy Lee. Back in 2019, musician Tommy Lee and his wife were thrown out of a high-end restaurant in New Orleans after being unruly and rude with staff members. According to sources from TMZ, the couple were looking to dine at Emeril Lagasse's restaurant when the couple got into an altercation with staff members. Tommy and his wife entered the restaurant wearing hats and according to the restaurant's dress code, they aren't allowed to wear them, so they were simply asked to take the hats off. This is when things took a turn as Tommy got very upset with this rule and threw some colorful language about. He eventually moved his hat as they were seated at their table, but things escalated even further. The couple were then confronted about their use of profanity in the restaurant because it was rude and staff members demanded that they take accountability for their actions. This made Tommy even more frustrated with the staff, and after a long spew of profanities, the restaurant's employees were forced to remove the pair from the premises. They eventually found somewhere else to go, but their rudeness was certainly uncalled for. All that was asked of them was to simply follow the restaurant's dress code. At number five, Ariana Grande. One celebrity that you don't often see getting into conflicts is Ariana Grande. For the most part, the singer keeps to herself and doesn't really cause much high profile drama, but she has had her moments in the past and one in particular that was very rude. Ariana was caught in a scandal in 2015 after being exposed for her behavior while visiting a bakery in California. Though it may not be technically a traditional restaurant, it's still an eating establishment, so it counts. Surveillance cameras in the donut shop caught the singer licking donuts while the employees weren't looking and 
even caught her yelling about her distaste for America's eating habits. The footage was leaked and shared by TMZ, and after the footage went viral, the owner of the donut shop spoke out about Ariana and that she was also caught spitting on some of the donuts as well, and said that she was reportedly very rude to staff working there, demanding that the person helping her keep bringing out the pastries that the other employees were baking. As if that was all, the shop's owner also said that the donuts that were defiled by Ariana were unknowingly sold to other customers that day. So not only did she disrespect the staff and their baked goods, but also the other customers, though they might not have known it. At number four, Kit Harrington. Though he played a noble man of the Night's Watch on Game of Thrones, actor Kit Harrington was less than chivalrous at a bar in NYC, resulting in him having to be removed from the establishment by staff members. According to a report from TMZ in 2018, the King of the North was having a night out at a bar playing pool and drinking to excess and being quite rude to people. During one of his pool matches, it is said that the actor got very unruly and belligerent and was asked to leave the premises, which he did. But a little while later, he came back to the establishment and at that point, he had to be forcibly removed from the bar. Kit was apparently being rude and disrespectful to those working there as well as other patrons as his drunken state caused him to act on some less than kind impulses. Since this accident, Kit has come out to address his excessive drinking, saying that he was having a hard time coping with the end of Game of Thrones. After filming Wrapped on the HBO show, Kit actually checked himself into rehab for his own well-being and sought out therapy to help him cope with his evolving career. It's good to know that this event caused him to take a step back and reevaluate his choices, but people probably still saw him as another rude celebrity star in that moment. At number three, Britney Spears. Looking back on it now, this isn't something that should have been made fun of in the media, but back in 2007, during her public fall from grace, Britney Spears was berated by the public after she put on quite a spectacle while dining at the Chateau Marmont. Britney was seen as a rude and unruly guest as diners were shocked to see Britney smearing her face with gourmet food in a show of inappropriate behavior. As a result, she was removed from the premises and subsequently banned from the restaurant. People who witnessed Britney's behavior said that they wouldn't even expect this kind of behavior from a teenager, calling Britney's display childish and uncalled for, and even added that royalty had dined at the Chateau Marmont, saying that her behavior was absolutely unacceptable. Apparently, when Britney arrived at the hotel, she looked out of it, but of course, instead of helping her, everyone just watched the spectacle and laughed when she was berated in the media because of it. On top of all the other names Britney was being called at the time, Rue became a new way to describe the struggling pop star. At number two, Leah Michelle. I think we all know by now that Leah Michelle is a rude celebrity. We learned this last year when she was exposed by countless co-workers for her horrible on-set behavior, but she's also been exposed by restaurant staff for being a rude guest. One waiter's horror story of serving the actress tells us that she was once continuously harassing them while helping her order, while she made fun of them while they were trying to explain the dish's ingredients. Leah apparently insisted that she didn't understand what the waiter was saying, and then went on to complain to several of the restaurant's managers and higher-ups. To make matters more Karen-y, Leah also apparently sent her father to go knock on the kitchen window to berate the cooks 20 minutes after they ordered, demanding that they receive the food because they had been waiting for quote, hours. This rude behavior doesn't really surprise me coming from Leah because after hearing her former co-workers horror stories, I now realize that with Leah, anything is possible. And finally, at number one, Kendall Jenner. Being that she is a member of the Cara Jenner family, rude behavior doesn't really surprise me. Back in 2014, a story broke about how Kendall had been allegedly very rude at a restaurant, ending with her throwing money at a staff member. The story here goes that she and Haley Baldwin was dining at a restaurant together when they allegedly left without paying for their meal. Their bill came up to about $60, so it wasn't really that much, but it still doesn't mean that you can get away with not paying for it. A staff member then chased after the pair as they walked away from the restaurant, and when they were stopped and asked to pay for their meal, Kendall allegedly pulled out a couple of $20 bills from her bag and threw it at the staff member. That was seriously rude and certainly uncalled for. In at number 10, culturally insensitive. Jennifer got into a massive scandal after she admitted to being insensitive to the Hawaiian culture. Basically, Jen was filming The Hunger Games in Hawaii, and in the movie she wears wetsuits a lot, which can get pretty itchy. So in 2016 on The Graham Norton Show, she admitted that she'd scratched her butt on some sacred ceremonial rocks while filming in Hawaii. She said, quote, there were sacred rocks. I don't know, they were ancestors, who knows? 
They were sacred. And you're not supposed to sit on them because you're not supposed to expose your genitalia to them. I, however, was in a wetsuit for this whole shoot. Oh my god, they were so good for butt itching. Apparently, she moved the rock so much at one point, one came loose and started a landslide. The Hawaiian people thought it was a sign of a curse, but it was just Jen being disrespectful. She tried to be funny and relatable while telling the story and didn't think she would get in any trouble, but people were angry at how nonchalantly she admitted to disrespecting Hawaii. After the backlash, she posted an apology to Facebook, but many didn't buy it. And at number nine, weight insensitivity. One thing many fans know about Jen is that she speaks off the cuff and rarely filters out what she says, which can cause a lot of funny moments as well as a lot of insensitive ones. One thing she gets to backlash about is her comments about her own weight. Jen has been open about the toxicity of weight in Hollywood and says that she was often asked to lose weight before movies. Because of this, she's been quoted saying, quote, in Hollywood, I'm obese. I'm considered a fat actress. I'm Val Kilmer in that one picture on the beach. Another quote said, quote, I eat like like a caveman. I'll be the only actress that doesn't have anorexia rumors. Many people take these comments to be body positive, and although we love that she won't lose weight for movies, she's also already pretty slender, so giving the middle finger to the man here is a lot easier for her. And when someone the size of Jen calls herself fat, that makes anyone larger than her feel even more insecure about their own weight. Like if Jen calls herself overweight, literally what am I? <laughs> I know it's all jokes, but the self-deprecation can seem pretty insincere at times. And at number eight, biphobic comments. Another thing that's gotten Jen heat in the press has been some biphobic comments that she made about one of the characters she played. She played X-Men character Mystique in the movie franchise, and was shocked to learn that the character was actually bisexual. When speaking about the character's sexuality, she said, quote, she has kids, she has night crawlers, and she sleeps with Magneto. Unless I'm completely wrong, I mean, she's 100 years old, she definitely had time for a lesbian phase. And obviously, that phrase is gonna anger a lot of people in the community who've been working hard to break those stigmas, especially because bisexuality is not a phase. Jen also called her own style at one point, quote, slutty power lesbian, because she had a pixie haircut, which is just wrong on so many levels. And at number seven, trash reporter. Jennifer Lawrence got massive backlash after after she was rude to a reporter at the 2016 Golden Globes. After she accepted the award, she was in the press room answering questions from tons of reporters. At one point, a Spanish reporter who was speaking with an accent started asking a question, but he was looking at his phone the whole time. Jennifer tried to joke around by telling the reporter to put down his phone if he wanted to ask her questions. She also mocked him after he mistook the event for the Oscars. However, it was pretty obvious that he was just reading his questions off his phone, which is pretty common for reporters these days. After her rude comments, hate flooded in against the star. People also gave the perspective that the reporter may have been translating his questions into English, that's why he was staring at his phone. It also just rubbed people the wrong way that she assumed that everyone speaks English. And at number six, paparazzi. Like many other celebrities in Hollywood, Jennifer Lawrence hates paparazzi. But really, I mean, who can blame her? And she makes a point to bring up her disdain for paparazzi whenever possible. Like in one interview with Vogue, where she said, quote, if I were just your average 23 year old girl and I called the police to say that there were strange men sleeping on my lawn and following me to Starbucks, they would leap into action. But because I'm a famous person, well, sorry, ma'am, there's nothing we can do. It makes no sense. Jenna's also talked about how she doesn't like fame and how fan interactions make her really uncomfortable. So that's obviously a big part of the reason that she maintains such a low profile most of the time. Halfway at number five, Lindsay Lohan. Jennifer Lawrence has poked fun at many fellow celebrities over the years, but none was worse than when she made some nasty comments about Lindsay Lohan. While Jennifer Lawrence was on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert in 2015, Lawrence offended Lindsay Lohan and her family. It started when Lawrence was talking about how she got a stomach virus while filming, but she still kept shooting. Then she made the comment, quote, I get like Lindsay Lohan great exhaustion, but without any drugs or alcohol. And obviously those kinds of words will start a fight with anybody. Almost right after the show aired, Lohan's younger sister, Aliana tweeted out, quote, I never breathe life into negativity, but I stand by my family. Disappointed in Jennifer Lawrence, not cool. Lindsay Lohan then replied to the tweet saying, quote, thank you, sister. Maybe who you're referring to should learn to support others like Maya and Angelou. Lohan's mom also commented on the incident weeks later, so it's safe to say Lohan's family and fans hate Jennifer Lawrence. And at number four, Lala Kent. This is another example of Jen talking trash about a fellow celebrity and then getting called out. While Jen was on an episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, she decided to take aim at Vanderpump Rules star Lala Kent. It started when Andy was asking Jennifer what she thought of the cast of Vanderpump Rules. When the conversation went to Lala, Lauren straight up called her the C word along with tons of other digs at her. 
her. As a response, Lala tweeted out, quote, Did Jennifer Lawrence really call me the C word on Watch What Happens Live and talk about my mama? B, you better pray I don't see you in the streets. And that was just the first of a long string of now deleted tweets. The shade didn't stop there. Lala went on the Juicy Scoop podcast and called out Jennifer further. She said that Lawrence had, quote, two failed films in a row and said that she was the type of girl that would sleep with Harvey Weinstein for a role. Lawrence never responded to any of the shade, probably because she knew she was in the wrong. And at number three, Jennifer Lopez. I wouldn't classify this one as rude as much as just proving that Jennifer Lawrence can be very over dramatic. The feud started when Lawrence was on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and Lawrence shared a story from the Met Ball. Apparently Jennifer Lawrence and Jimmy Kimmel were very drunk and wanted to ask J-Lo to dance. Apparently they went over to her and she turned them down, with Lopez saying she just wanted to observe. And even though the story was lighthearted, it still made J-Lo look kinda bad for saying no. So J-Lo decided to set the record straight and she actually came up with her version of events. She told Access Hollywood, quote, I remember that we were at the Met Ball and Kanye was about to perform and it was like a crazy moment. And then they came over and they were like, let's go dance. And I was like, uh, no, I'm good right here. But I didn't mean it like I don't wanna dance with you. I just meant it like it's so crowded in here. Let's just stay right here. So she basically called out JLo on TV for no reason. And at number two, rude to fans. Probably one of the most bizarre things about Jennifer Lawrence is that she's admitted that she hates speaking to fans. It's so bad that she's decided to be really rude to fans so they leave her alone. Uh, interesting strategy. When speaking with Adam Sandler, she told him, quote, generally once I enter a public place, I become incredibly rude. I turn into a huge a-hole. She then continued that it's her way of defending herself and that she acts like this to make sure nobody crosses any boundaries. And just to contrast how terrible Jen sounded here, Adam Sandler said he makes a point to be really nice to his fans, saying, quote, my life's nearing the end. I want to meet as many people as I can. And finally, number one, Hurricane. Jennifer Lawrence has become increasingly more political over the years and she was frequently critical of Donald Trump during his presidency. However, she got some heat after she made some comments about hurricanes. From the quotes that were taken, it seemed like Jennifer Lawrence was blaming the influx of hurricanes on Trump's win, saying that Mother Nature was raging. She was harshly criticized for the comments, so she posted a statement about the incident on her Facebook page. She wrote in part, quote, My remarks were taken grossly out of context. Obviously, I never claimed that President Trump was responsible for these tragic hurricanes. That is a silly and preposterous headline that is unfortunate because it detracts from the millions of lives that are being impacted by these devastating storms and the recent earthquakes. At number 10, Jennifer Lopez. This probably doesn't come as a shock to many, but it turns out that JLo isn't very nice. A lot of people have said that she's a real diva and others say that she's just plain rude and she's done a number of things that have rubbed people the wrong way. Apparently the singer slash actress is very picky about who may or may not speak to her and for those permitted to address her, they're not allowed to make eye contact. There have even been reports that she flat out refuses to comply with scripts. This has happened on a few occasions, most notably during filming for a Fiat commercial where they needed to hire a double for Jennifer simply because she just didn't want to do certain things for the shoot. On top of that, she doesn't have a good reputation with a lot of people who's worked with her either. She's said to have completely ignored the people who are remodeling her house. She's gotten a cleaning lady fired for having asked for an autograph and she even refuses to talk to in-flight staff and pilots on flight and instructs her assistant to talk to them for her. And to make matters worse, even though her staff do so much for her, including communicating for her, they don't get paid very much for their time. Even though she may seem super cool on the surface, she's a little sour in real life. At number nine, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey isn't the nicest person ever. She's had several run-ins with the paparazzi, which have not gone over well. She's had some pretty bad relationships with others, and she's known for being a complete and utter diva. But there's one incident in particular that really just exposes how mean Mariah can be. There was a lawsuit from one of Mariah's former assistants, which accused her of a number of horrible things. The former assistant alleged that the singer peed on her, ridiculed her body, and called her a handful of of pretty rude names. Her former assistant said that she was hired by the singer to be on call 24-7 and assisted both Mariah and her manager at the time. Though she was paid a salary of $250,000 a year, this wage couldn't cover up the horrible things that she was put through by Mariah. But her case wasn't the only one up against the singer at the time. While this case was being disputed, Mariah had just settled one with her former manager who cited breach of contract, harassment, and unpaid wages. Just because you pay the people a lot of money doesn't mean you get to treat them 
them like trash. Now before I carry on with the list, I would like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, because your likes really help to support the channel and we love to see it. At number eight, Gwyneth Paltrow. A lot of people seem to really dislike Gwyneth Paltrow for some reason. Though she's never really done anything horrible to people directly, it is alleged that she's so disliked in Hollywood because she comes off as pretty pretentious, egotistical, and privileged. People don't really see Gwyneth as the average person or as someone that they can relate to, which a lot of people seem to find off-putting. The Goop founder seems to like flaunting her wealth and materialistic things and makes it seem like it's something that everyone else has or can't afford. For example, her Goop website's list of must-have clothing pieces and other things include things that cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars, which not a lot of people can relate to having. On top of that, she came from a wealthy family, so being someone who's always been rich, she doesn't really know how to humble herself around those who haven't been as fortunate as her. People also don't like how she comes across as self-centered as she seems to always talk about herself and how fit she is and how great her lifestyle is. She also has a diva attitude. She's been known to slam Michelin star restaurants and if you know what that means then you know she's got an attitude to do something like that. And to make matters worse, she's been known to demand that people clean and dry the shower at the gym after someone's used it because she quote, can't touch somebody else's shower water. Yeah. She just has a lot of diva energy and can come across as quite rude, so I can understand why not everyone wants to be her friend. At number seven, James Corden. A lot of people don't like James Corden. Celebrities and regular old Joes like you and me just can't seem to get along with the late night host and there's a few reasons for this. Turns out that he's actually pretty mean in real life and this persona that you see on TV is all just an elaborate ruse. In reality, James is arrogant, rude, and a huge diva. There are a bunch of stories that paint James as a mean person. Firstly, he was once part of a group of people who advocated for paying late night writers less money. Yeah, you heard that right. He's also been known to use a good old do you know who I am line quite a number of times and he's even reportedly told someone that he could buy them if they didn't do what he wanted. There's a lot of problematic energy to unpack there, but that is a whole other video. On top of that, there's been incidents of fans catching James being mean to his wife and letting his temper get the best of him at times. A lot of people say that he only acts nice in order to butt kiss his way to the top and he doesn't care who he takes down in the process. But I think people are starting to catch on to this ruse because more and more people are starting to dislike him. Just ask Twitter. At number six, Amy Schumer. It seems like Amy Schumer doesn't really care about what people think of her. In a way that can be a good thing because you learn to live your life for yourself but it can also give you an attitude and prevent you from thinking about your actions and how they can impact others. An example of this comes from an incident from back in 2018 where Amy full on stole a comedian's stand up set. Amy was at a comedy club and up on stage, an up and coming comedian was doing one of his first long sets and obviously this was a pretty big deal for the guy until Amy ruined it. She walked into the venue and went to the manager to ask if she could steal 10 minutes of stage time because she wanted to practice her new set. Because the other comedian just started on stage, the manager said no, so Amy hit back with the, but I'm Amy Schumer. Like that's really gonna do something. After getting refusals left and right, she decided to take matters into her own hands and marched up on the stage and just took over his time for a few minutes. I know Amy is a big timer, but come on, you have to remember what it was like to be up and coming and that kind of behavior is just rude. At number five, Katherine Heigl. A lot of people don't like Katherine Heigl because of how rude she is. She's known in the film industry for being pretty mean and having a diva attitude. She's allegedly mean to people on set, has high demands, and just has a very bad overall attitude. She's known to be quite critical of her roles and the material that she's given to work with, and she even said this when she withdrew from the Emmy nominations because she said that the material she was given for Grey's Anatomy didn't warrant an Emmy. That is certainly disrespectful to the writers because for someone to say something like that implies that the writing wasn't good enough to please people, whereas the people at the Emmys thought it was worth an award. And on top of that, winning this kind of award looks good for the team, but Catherine obviously didn't think of that. She only thought about herself. The actress is known to make ridiculously high salary demands, and she's apparently been doing this since before she became a big name in the industry. She's reportedly hired and fired a lot of publicists and assistants over the years, so she really sounds like quite the diva and a horrible boss too. Because of all this, directors and Hollywood execs just don't want to work with her anymore, and honestly, I can't really say that I blame them. At number 4, 
Michael Phelps. Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is often referred to as the best swimmer of all time, but it seems like his aquatic skills are really the only thing he's got going for him since apparently he's got a pretty bad attitude and is pretty rude in real life. Michael has done some bad stuff in his life, so people already don't think that highly of him as an individual. Back in 2014, he was arrested for driving under the influence, and speaking of under the influence, Phelps has also been caught with drugs before. Already, this isn't good for his image because being an Olympian, people have a lot of eyes on you. Phelps was reprimanded for his drunk driving and was suspended from swimming for six months, but other than that, this scandal was kept pretty under wraps. Now, if only they could have put that much energy into Jakari Richardson. On top of this swimmer being a felon, he's also known to not be a team player. Apparently, he hides himself away from his other teammates when at competitions like the Olympics instead of being with his team to support them. You would think that being at something like the Olympics, you would want to soak up all that team spirit, but no. Michael wants nothing to do with his team and instead flies solo. Kind of mean if you ask me. At number three, Jared Leto. You may like Jared Leto on screen, but off screen, he's kind of a jerk. There's even a list online that tallies up all the reasons that make him a bad person. And if something like that exists, then you know something's up. Some of the reasons listed as to why Jared sucks so much include the fact that he's been caught being mean to fans, he's rude to reporters during interviews, and he's offended the trans community after winning an Oscar for his performance in Dallas Buyers Club, and not mentioning the trans community in his speech, as well as undermining the struggles of the trans community after joking about his appearance in character. Jared has also admitted to lying during interviews whenever possible for absolutely no reason, and people found his Joker antics on the set of Suicide Squad to be a little mean because of the pranks that he would play on people as well as the gifts that he would send to the cast and crew. Most of the allegations against Jared and his attitude are pretty minor, but add them all up and you get someone that you might not necessarily enjoy having around. But what do you guys think? You still want to be his friend? At number two, Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera may have the voice of an angel, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she is one. Turns out she has a bit of a dark side and a handful of people have experienced it. Other than being shady at Lady Gaga during their 2008 feud, where she called her some unpleasant names and said, quote, I'm not quite sure who this person is. To be honest, I don't know if it's a man or a woman. End quote. She's also had some other rude encounters with more of her peers. When working on the set of her various gigs, she's reportedly always late, holds up production, and never apologizes for delaying production. She also reportedly has some beef with Adam Levine while working on The Voice, and they would bicker constantly. Christina is also known to be an absolute diva, and working with her seems to be a nightmare because sources say that she's very rude and demanding of her household staff, and treats her staff poorly, insisting that they are on call 24-7. Christina also has had feuds with Pink, Mariah Carey, and even got mad at Mickey Mouse once. Yeah, she got into a heated argument with Mickey Mouse when she was at Disneyland in 2014 for her birthday. She wanted to take a picture with the mouse, but he was going on break, so instead of being an understanding person, she pulled the do you know who I am card. I mean, how can you do that to Mickey? What did Mickey do? And finally, at number one, Bruce Willis. Actor Bruce Willis has had a great career making great movies and basking in fame, but it seems as though he's not all that great in real life. Apparently, Bruce is a nightmare to work with as he's gotten into a number of conflicts with others on set and people just really hate working with him. Before Die Hard launched his film career, he was brought into stardom after working on the show Moodlighting alongside his co-star Sybil Shepard. Back in 2005, Shepard told sources that there came a point where her relationship with Bruce became really toxic and they clashed a lot on set. There was reportedly constant bickering and it was just a really bad working environment. But of course, Sybil isn't the only one to have clashed with Bruce while working together. Filmmaker Kevin Smith has also had his troubles with working with Bruce while filming the 2010 film Cop Out. He told sources that though he once saw Bruce as his hero in past productions, that opinion completely went out the window, saying that working with Bruce was difficult. When speaking out about their time together on set, Kevin said, quote, he turned out to be the unhappiest, most bitter, and meanest emo B word I've ever met at any job I've held down. And mind you, I worked at Domino's Pizza. What an awful experience, end quote. Now, I I just wonder if something triggers this horrible behavior or if he's just always like this. Now let's check out some of your comments from the video titled Top 10 Celebrities Recently Released From Prison. Melanie Clyde says, sounds about white. <laughs> Hey, I had to go there on that one, just for fun. Just for fun, I throw that one in there. I'll do, I'll do it for you guys. Sarah Davis says, thank you for the great video, Johnny. Thanks for watching, Sarah. I always appreciate the comment. Tom says, nice content, it was really entertaining. 
I think you're a bot, Tom, but I hope you're doing well. Veronica Moore says, oh my god, I'm so early on first. I've checked, and we verified, yes, you were indeed first. Congratulations, everybody. Claps in the chat. Glam Light Junkie says, and happy Easter, guys. Hopefully the big bunny brought everyone lots of toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Happy Easter to you as well, and that should be what the Easter bunny brings from now on. I think we've, we're all safe to say that that's what he needs to be bringing. Brandon says, Janet Hubert, the woman who played the first Aunt Viv. Well, isn't that interesting? You think she's the rudest person. Look at that. Angela Anna says, I only clicked because I refuse to believe Will Smith is rude, but we will see, huh? Honestly, I agree. I don't like when people call him rude because I've always really liked him. However, I don't know him, so who really knows? Jabbar Muhammad says, you can't talk to most celebrities. Ah, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a hit or miss. I've heard a lot of positive things about meeting celebrities, so I don't know. Wayne Hawks says, Margot Robbie can be extremely rude at times. Ooh. I mean, I would like some more tea on this. I didn't think she was rude, but if you got stories, I wanna hear them. Comments from my video on celebrities that should be in jail. So Em said, I used to be a fan, but after watching this great masterpiece, I'm a whole air conditioner now. Thank you so much. We love having you here. You're the best. Then Queenie Snake said, David Letterman is creepy AF, but these clips are being gross and persistent and still wanting the guests to talk about something they don't wanna do, being mean, but not doing anything illegal and have him sent to jail. Uh, yeah, that was total hyperbole. I do not think he should be sent to jail whatsoever, but I do think he should address it. Then Mark said, thanks, Mac. These celebrities think they're too good for the law and believe they're above it. They never heard of equal justice under the law. They must have missed civics class in high school. Uh, yeah, they're probably sleeping through that. <laughs> I think that they know that they're above the law, but they don't really care and they just like expect that at this point. Before I go, I'm gonna shout out some comments from my last video on Trisha Paytas. BS1 said, we don't listen to Gabby or Trisha. They're trolls, we don't feed them. Um, that's probably the best way to look at it. Both are bad, but honestly, I'm probably slightly more more of a fan of Gabby's. Like in the past, I used to really like her. I mean, she's gone a little off the rails, but like I still probably would watch her over Trisha. Then Jabbar said, she seems like the type of person who is involved in toxic drama. Yes, literally all the time. She's like, it, she can't avoid it. So yeah, this is exactly who it is.